Hello everyone, I'm Freya and welcome to my broom closet. Today I'm going to be discussing 10 ways to hide items in the broom closet. A lot of these have had a 100% success rate, so please stick around for my most successful ways to hide your tools and ingredients in the broom closet. Now, most of these I have tried and others I haven't tried, so I will let you know which ones I've tried and which ones I haven't. For each hiding place method, I'm going to discuss the pros and cons to each one. This will just give you a good idea on uh, which ones you should use in which situation. So let's begin. So the first one is the closet. This is a classic spot. I'm pretty sure most people have probably used this method. It works better if you have a really busy wardrobe with lots of trousers and dresses in it, just so it's really easy to hide items behind the clothes and you can't see when you've just opened it from the outside. This is really easy, really quick to access, very quick to hide. It's overall a good solution that should work most of the time. Drawbacks, maybe that it's not 100% foolproof. It can be risky if other people use the wardrobe or if it needs cleaning out as you do, you know, donating old clothes to charity and things like that. The second one is underneath the bottom drawer of a cabinet. So I'm not sure whether a lot of people know this, but most cabinets and drawers have a little section underneath the bottom drawer that's actually empty. If you have a cabinet that you can remove the drawer out of, there is actually quite a sizable space under there that you can hide a lot of tools and ingredients and even books. So just as a little demonstration, I've got my tarot cards. I've got my bag of runes, I've got some birthday cake candles, some more birthday cake candles, and I've got some mini jars, that's some sweet pea petals, I've got a journal, and some incense, and a book. I can actually fit a lot more in there, but that's just for demonstration purposes. This is super effective, very low chance of someone finding your stuff. Personally, I've used this method for a good couple years. Most of the cons from this method mostly arise just if you don't have a cabinet with removable drawers or if all of your cabinets have a base at the bottom that stops you putting things in that empty space. If you have a cabinet with an empty space but the drawer isn't removable, this can make it quite hard to use. Your arm can often get um, trapped and it's quite easy to lose items behind the back of the drawer if a drawer doesn't come out. That said, overall this is a very good method. It's just a little bit circumstantial. The next method is to hide your items behind books on a bookshelf. So this is really easy to use. I'm sure most broom closet witches probably would have thought of this idea already. The idea is to just remove some books and put whatever item, like tarot cards or something, and put the books back again. This is really easy to do. I've heard of witches who kind of use the excuse that they were making all their books line up nicer. So that's a really easy thing to do. So the pros of this method is that it's really simple to do, but the main drawbacks of this method is that it can only be used to hide small items like tarot cards or small books. And also removing and replacing books every single time you want to use an item is far from ideal. It gets a bit tedious after a while. I know that from personal experience. Use this method for items that you don't use very much. I wouldn't recommend this method for something that you use every day. Also, be wary of other people coming to snoop your stuff. I've actually had stuff discovered this way because, you know, they took books off the bookshelf to clean or whatever and then I've had my stuff discovered, so please be aware of that. The next method 
is behind a bookcase or a cabinet. So if you have a small gap between a bookcase or a cabinet and the wall, then this is a really easy method to conceal a diary or a small book or maybe some tarot cards. This is really easy to do, easy access, and it's ideal for items that you use on a regular basis. So I've used this method for years with a personal diary of mine, no one found it, and every time I wanted to take it out, I just reached behind the bookcase and took it out. Obviously, the cons for this is that it can only be used for small items like books, things that are thin enough to fit in that gap between the wall and the bookcase. You can easily lose an item if you push it in too far, or it can be discovered if you don't push it in far enough. It can also possibly be discovered if someone loses something behind the bookcase or the cabinet and then they need to take it out to find the item. Okay, so the next method is to hide your items under a floorboard. So I know this method looks like it came straight out of a movie, but trust me, it works so well. No one has found my stuff and they probably never will, unless they watch this video. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show some images of my hiding spot in my old house where I used to live, um, just because obviously I can't demonstrate this in this house. So sorry if the pictures are super low quality, <laughs> but I hope that gives you a dem demonstration of how I do it. So I know it looks cliche, but this spot really does work. I've used this method for a number of years. So the obvious pros to this method are it's super effective, almost 100% foolproof, there is almost no chance of being discovered, and it is a great solution for items that you use very rarely or not at all. The main cons of this method is that obviously not everyone has removable floorboards in their homes. I just so happened to live in kind of an old home that had a hole in the floor that I was able to keep my stuff, but I know not everyone has this. Like I've moved into a more modern house where I couldn't even dream of doing that. So this method is super circumstantial. Also items can be hard to access since you need to remove carpet and floorboards every single time and there might be stuff on top. So definitely not ideal for items you use on a regular basis, but if you can utilize this method, definitely do it. The next method, which is one of my favorites just because of how ironic it is, is to hide your items in plain sight. Now I know this sounds like a total oxymoron, like how can I hide my items just out in the open? That sounds impossible. But this actually works really well if you can pull it off. So this is really good for permanent altars and items that you use on a regular basis. It's great for hiding big items like cauldrons and there's pretty much no chance of someone discovering it because it's already out on display. So if you're able to sell it as just decor or um, some sort of display, then it's a really good solution. So an example of this is I often used to use my cauldron, which was actually Harry Potter merchandise. I used to use my cauldron just to hold my necklaces and my jewelry and things like that. I also used to have a permanent altar on display. The way I sold this is that I had this mini Zen garden. It was literally just a plate of white sand. It had like a little Buddha statue on it. it had a cute little tiny rake <laughs> that I could put waves in the sand and some stones. So. That was really easy because I find that Christians tend to tolerate Buddhism and things like, and yoga, meditation, things like that a lot better. So if you have a permanent altar, I really recommend putting things like Zen gardens and things that just don't really give the game away. So on my permanent altar, I used to have big line of crystals that obviously I used in my witchy work, but because I arranged them in such a way, they just looked really pretty and really nice and really complimentary with the Zen garden. I also had some statues and my Christian confirmation candle. That's right, I'm actually a confirmed Christian. That I'll get into that in another video. <laughs> the cons of this method are obviously it can't be used for obvious magical items 
like your wand, runes, tarot cards because they will totally give the game away. So you'll have to find other methods to hide these sort of items. Now this next method I haven't tried but I could really see it working quite well which is to hollow out a book. There is a really good tutorial from WikiHow and this method is just really good for small items that you use on a regular basis. I could really see this working well so if you use this method please let me know how it works out for you. And the drawbacks of this method are obviously you can't hide big items like books. Now again this method I haven't really tried but I know a lot of people get a lot of success out of it so this one is to hide your crystals in a decorative terrarium. So these are really fashionable and trendy decor at the moment. You basically buy an empty terrarium from department stores like The Range here. I know some supermarkets like Tesco in the UK they do um, the terrariums that you can buy and then you basically fill them with sand or soil and put some cacti in them and you can also put your crystals in them. So this is really good because it can be ideal for urban witches because it gives you a nice excuse to have some houseplants to look after if you put cacti in them and they could also serve a dual purpose as a witch bottle. So you can put crystals in there and charge it with intention to either be some sort of honey jar spell or to bring in prosperity, abundance, things like that. So dual purpose as a witch bottle is also a really good idea. And you can totally sell this as just a decorative terrarium. The only cons to this method are that it obviously can't be used to hide your other witchy items. So this is mostly just for stones and crystals. Although you could possibly hide small items in the soil or the sand at the bottom. The next suggestion I have is to cover your witchy books. So there's a nice tutorial I'm going to link in the description from WikiHow. So the main idea is to just cover your books with fabric or wrapping paper. So you know this just hides the title and the author of what the book is about. An alternative to this method is to take off a dust jacket off of another book and put it onto your witchy book. Obviously this needs to be similar size just so it really sells it. The last hiding method that I'm going to cover is mostly just for the ladies out there. So I know that most ladies will have a small bag in their purse or their handbag which is for their feminine hygiene products. Yeah, this can be easily used to hide some small tools or even a travel altar. This is great because if anyone asks then you can just say that it's your lady bag for your feminine hygiene products. The last thing I want to cover in this video is some tips for hiding your magical items. The first one is to not hide your items under a pillow. There's not really a particular reason why I'm saying this, it's just from personal experience this has never worked for me. It has only worked in an emergency but for some reason I'd always forget about the item and then it would get discovered later. Hiding items under a pillow is a good emergency solution but for me personally it's just never worked as a permanent solution. The next tip is to change your hiding spots on a regular basis. So you might think that you've found some good places for your items but changing your hiding spots on a regular basis really encourages you to find new spots and discover which ones you can use in an emergency and which ones you can use as a permanent solution. Also this stops people who might be getting onto you coming in and finding your items because you've already changed the hiding spot. The next tip is sometimes the best spots are the easiest spots. So I've literally just gotten the most success out of just hiding random tools in random drawers. But basically you just have to be careful and keep your wits about you when using this sort of method. But trust me, it does actually work quite well. 
The next thing is just covering your items with a piece of clothing can be a very effective emergency solution. When I first tried this, I thought I was going to get found out straight away. I had to leave my temporary altar in a rash. So I literally just dumped a hoodie or a blanket on it and people came in and it was like they didn't even know and they still don't know. So this is obviously not a permanent solution, but this is great if you have to leave something behind in a spell in a rush. I just recommend using something large and puffy like a coat or a hoodie or a blanket. The penultimate point is to use magic to keep your tools and items hidden or to make them less noticeable. The main thing for this point is to remember that you're a witch. You can just enchant your items with a sort of forget me spell or a hiding spell which will either make your items harder to discover or if they do get discovered they're just more likely to be ignored or forgotten about. You can also cast a spell to discourage people from looking through your stuff or disrupting your privacy. So the last tip is the worst thing you can do is not hide your stuff at all. This seems kind of dumb but when I first got into witchcraft I kind of just left my tarot cards out and then someone walked into my room and discovered them. Even if you have to leave your stuff for like five seconds, just hide it because you just never know. It's better to be safe than sorry. So that was 10 ways to hide your tools and ingredients in the broom closet. I hope you guys enjoyed and please, if this helped you out, please share it with others to help out as many broom closet witches as possible. And please comment below any suggestions that you have for even more hiding places that I haven't even thought of. For more information on anything I've discussed in this video, check out the description for links to things and also check out r slash broom closet witch on reddit. It has a huge wiki with loads of information and lots more detail on what I've covered in my videos. But if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more because I will make loads more videos in the future. I hope you have a great day and blessed be.